Look, I'll be honest, the tech influencer space is booming right now with AI sponsors. And that's great, and I've certainly taken some of those sponsors, but it does make it hard to actually form opinions as a consumer when it feels like pretty much every single video has a sponsor. But not this video. Today, I'm going to share with you every AI tool that I actually use in my regular life for my content business as well as for my software engineering work. And nothing about this video is sponsored in any way whatsoever. Okay, so first the obvious one is ChatGPT. I use this throughout the day for random tasks. For example, the other day I was at Home Depot trying to buy a tool to crack open a PSA graded Pokemon slab, but I wasn't actually sure which one I needed. I sent ChatGPT some pictures and it was able to understand what was actually in the pictures and give me the best tool for the job. It actually worked. I also sort of use ChatGPT a bit like Google. Like I used it the other day to find hotel options near an event that I'm going to be going to in Atlanta. And again, that worked out perfectly. From a technical perspective, I also use ChatGPT for some coding questions where I don't want it to really have any context on the repo. For example, I might ask it to create a new database to write a generic helper function or to help me think through a system design or various other tasks where I don't want it to over index on the code base it's a part of. And it's also worth noting that all of these tasks that I give ChatGPT could probably also be done by Gemini, Claude, Grok, Llama, or a variety of other models. But ChatGPT has worked well for me, and I just sort of like the interface, so that's the one that I primarily use. Now, when I do want to create some new application, generally, I like to start by first of all trying to get an idea of what the front end will look like, as well as by creating some initial starter code. And for this, there's really two tools that I like to use. The first is V0 from Vercel, and the second is Lovable. Personally, I like V0 a little bit better. I think the user interfaces it generates just tend to be better, and it uses Next.js by default, which I do really like. That said, I do almost always have issues with the code just not working initially and having to work through deleting some broken things. In particular, it has this issue with the package JSON and just sort of like over importing a bunch of things it doesn't need and things that end up actually conflicting with each other. I do also always run the prompts through Lovable as well, but I find that generally I'm liking V0's UIs better, so I tend to end up using it. Now, once I have decided on an initial user interface, I move over to a code editor and basically just never look at v0 or lovable again. Occasionally, if I have a new feature to add, I might ask it to design it to get ideas, but generally speaking, I only use them for the initial designs because it's kind of hard to work with the other code that you've written when it's sort of all coming back together. And for the code editor, I think there's really three choices right now, VS Code, Cursor, and Windsurf. Which one you choose is pretty much entirely just personal preference, as they are pretty close to feature parity at this point. In fact, I've actually used all three of them on stream and they all worked pretty well. I'm currently choosing to use cursor the most, but frankly, that's pretty much just because they gave me a bunch of free credits, so I'm working through those. They do all work pretty much the same in my opinion, and I'll just try a free trial of all of them to see which one you like the most, if any. As far as the model to use within Cursor, or whatever code editor you choose, I've primarily been using Claude 3.7 Sonnet. That said, over the last few days, I have been experimenting with GPT-5, and I think it might be performing marginally better. That said, it's hard to really tell, and your mileage may vary based on your own repository, the prompts you're using, and so on and so forth. I do have a tendency though to ask questions to one model, and if it is unable to perform the task, I'll go back to that checkpoint and just try a different model to see if it works any better. Sometimes that works, but really most of the time they all just give pretty much the same results for the same given prompt. Now, you might have noticed something interesting. This video isn't very long, and that's because I don't think you need to use like 20 different AI tools. Sure, a lot of them are pretty great, but ultimately they are mostly just wrappers around the same models doing the same things with different interfaces and system prompts. So at least in my own work, I don't find myself using a lot of these super specialized tools, at least not very consistently. But that's just how I work, and I'm sure that that will evolve over time as I find things that do make me more efficient. And one of those things was finding how to write really, really good prompts to get exactly what you want. So if you're interested in some of those prompts and figuring out how to write them yourself, you should probably watch this video next.